uh, Dahl Dairy here in Aviston, Illinois. We are uh, we're bagging silage today. Um, first of all, your bags that you're putting up out here. Uh, how how long are the bags that you're you're running right now? Uh, the bags we're running right now are, are uh, a 12 by 300. Um, and we go anywhere from 150s all the way up to 500 foot long bags. So one of these bags, typically, how much silage are you putting up in one of those? Uh, in each one of these bags, about 600 tons. So when we look at these bags, or whether we're looking at that, or uh, or bunker covers or anything, it's always the the uh, white on black plastic. Mm -hmm. um, and I know there are reasons specifically for for that. Um, you want to talk about that a little bit, just kind of the way that plastic functions. Yeah, well, uh, all plastics they're they're made in mills. That, that pertains to the thickness of it, and uh, it's made in layers. So uh, the first layer uh, is white. That kind of uh, it bounces the heat off it. You don't want you know overly hot, you know uh, doing that. Then you got your UV layers that protects against sunlight and degradation. The plastic that. Uh, then you also have your puncture resistance layers, and then you got your your stretch layers, which allows the solids to be packed in there without it you know popping and tearing the bag. Uh, and then when you start talking bunker covers, uh, they're usually made up to uh, uh, six mils. And then uh, obviously you want to put your uh, your oxygen or vapor barrier down. Uh, first, and then cover it with the uh, the bunker cover, and uh, those are made the same way, but they don't have the uh, the stretch in them because they're just uh, you know they're just lapped, lapped over top, and then we use sidewalls and other things to, to hold the, the covers down. Right, and you know with the with that plastic, you know these bags are going to sit here obviously for several months, maybe maybe a year at a time. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, that that plastics, first of all, you gotta you gotta protect that silage here and make sure that your fermentation process is protected. Um, but you know you got to have a durable, durable plastic that's gonna it's gonna hold up until you, until it's time to come out of the bag and go to the barn. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this piece of plastic I can just cut off a bag that's uh, two years old. So um, you can see it, it, it holds up. And then uh, this is you know this bag's got corn solids in it now, so you know it, it's gonna hold up. It's gonna stretch. It's gonna you know resist punctures. Um, it's uh, you want to use a high quality brand right. of plastic uh, to protect your investment in the feed. So, say we got a 300, 300 foot long bag here. How long does it take to fill that bag on, on average? Uh, using the system we're doing with the three row pull type chopper and the quick hitches, uh, we can fill one in about nine hours. Yeah. And that's only using uh, three guys. Right. So uh, it's for, for our setup, it works for us. It's pretty efficient. Uh, for our size of dairy, it's very uncommon to have a pull type yet, right. um, but it, it fits us. We, we know the system, so uh, it works very well for us. Good. Yeah, the uh, system's working really well. You know, as we're standing here, uh, you know, the bagger's running constantly, and there's, there's a stream of, of wagons coming in, uh, you know, so, so nonstop, once the chopper starts running, once we get those first few wagons filled, it's just oh, yeah. steadily, steadily steadily running on the farm. Yeah, for about nine hours, you're gonna see a wagon every probably six minutes. Right. So it's, uh, it's continuous, it's eat on the run, it's everything on the go.